If this is the first time you've ever seen me in video, you might be thinking to yourself, Oh what? Did you learn that no one gives a shit about your coffee boomerangs? Yes, I did learn that. And a whole lot more. My name is Jesse Driftwood and I make internet videos. Sometimes here on YouTube, sometimes on Instagram, and sometimes for other brands' social media pages. And believe it or not, I have Instagram stories to thank for all of that. Way back in the summer of 2016, not too long after Facebook failed to acquire Snapchat, they launched Instagram stories. It was part of the platform that was meant to be fun and spontaneous and not so curated and ultimately it was meant to be impermanent, you know, disappear. And I thought to myself, I should spend several hours every day making these. And I did, and it worked, and I learned a lot. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about. You've gotta do it for you. I had been working professionally in video and film for about six or seven years before I started making Instagram stories. And honestly, the reason I did it is because I wanted to prove to myself that I still loved doing it. It had been so long since I had done anything video-wise that I wasn't being paid for, and I just wanted to feel like I was 14 again, filming my friends ollie down their first five stair. Getting noticed is tricky. Everyone's trying to grow their brand and stuff like that. And so I think about it like this. There are two main ways to get noticed. You either have to be doing something unique, something people haven't seen before, or you do something that they're familiar with and you do it better. The second one is kind of like jumping on a trend on TikTok. It's not enough to just do it. You have to do something unique. You have to do it better than other people have done it. Whereas the first one, is like being the person that came up with the trend in the first place. Now, while I certainly didn't invent vlogging or short form storytelling or anything like that, to my knowledge, I was the first person that was treating Instagram stories as a platform for quality curated content. And at the time, that was enough for the average Instagram scroller to stop, watch, and consider actually following. Be consistent. I learned more in the two years I spent making Instagram stories on the daily than I did in the previous six shooting weddings and events and small commercials and stuff like that. And the reason is I was making more videos. And when you make more videos, you make more mistakes. And when you make more mistakes, you learn how to solve those mistakes. And so far, in my experience, a huge portion of filmmaking is problem solving, especially on set. Film yourself. The truth is, when I started doing this, I hated being on camera. I really just felt so uncomfortable. But when you're trying to make like videos every day, you know what's the thing you spend the most time with? Yourself. In the earliest days of my Instagram stories, I was almost exclusively just filming time lapses of me editing. And funny enough, I still do this and it's such a great technique because when I point my camera at my computer screen and I shoot a time lapse, I don't want people to know. I don't even want to know how much time I waste. So I just end up making a point of staying on task, if only to make it look like I'm the kind of person that stays on task. So that was a benefit. Find characters. Now I don't mean people necessarily, though it could be. I more so mean objects, ideas, themes, things that you can come back to over time, because what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna tie together all of your videos as like a single body of work. Imagine this like a, a, a sitcom that has a running joke. If you watched How I Met Your Mother, which I, I didn't really, but they'll make a joke in season 14 that is only really as funny as it is because of all the other instances of that joke beforehand. For me, the most common thing at the time was Soylent. And the reason I kept bringing it back is because the first story that I put it in, I got so many DMs. Half from people being like, oh, this is really interesting, tell me more. And half from people being like, uh, don't drink that. Don't drink that. And so I knew right away something like Soylent was actually creating an emotional response in people in a way that time lapses of myself editing never could. Don't 
be complacent. After about 40 or 50 Instagram stories that were mostly just me editing and time lapses from my phone, I realized that this was no longer a surprise to people and so I needed to turn things up a notch. So what I did is I bought a Canon M5 which was at the time like a small mirrorless camera because I wanted to experiment with things like slow motion and shallow depth of field using prime lenses and this really brought the quality up a notch. In fact one of the first times I made a story like this a good friend of mine she texted me and said Jesse no and right away I knew I was onto something. <laughs> make it visually interesting. I had been experimenting with in-camera transitions into my professional work as early as 2011 and way back into my high school videos in the mid 2000s. But for some reason, it took 53 Instagram stories before I thought, I can do that here too. And one thing I learned over time was just how many people watch Instagram stories without any sound. And so by adding a little bit of visual eye candy, making your story stand out more than the one they saw before it, they're that much more likely to stick around and see what's up. Make it mundane. Now this might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but hear me out for a second. When you're making these short form stories, especially on a platform for casual viewing for large amounts of people, it's good to try and find topics that are relatable to people. Not only that, but it's a heck of a lot easier to find something to make when you just look around you and go, I can make a story about that. You could make it about getting a soda pop from the fridge or one I made this week where I just got creative with my McDonald's order. Seriously, in 15 seconds, you could make almost anything interesting. In fact, if you got an idea for me that you don't think I could make interesting, let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll give it a shot. Make it rough. It is fun to make videos that are epic and buttery and smooth, but don't be afraid to show the moments that didn't work out. This is something Casey Neistat has been preaching for, I don't know, ever. Rough edges make it relatable. Oh, it is gonna rain. I just locked myself out of the studio. I don't know if he said it like that, but that sounds like a catchphrase. Rough edges make it relatable. By including those moments of humanity to it, not only does it make it more relatable to an audience, but it helps distinguish your videos from just a, a polished advertisement that they're being served. And oh my goodness, Instagram puts so many ads in stories now, so you actually might want to try and like steer away from some of that high gloss look. You're gonna be glad you did. As I started experimenting with making stories that weren't just me at work or me commuting to work, I started including my family more and more. And looking back now, I realized I captured so many memories, so many moments that I wouldn't have had I not been doing this. And so I'm just so thankful that not only have I documented things like my growth as a filmmaker, but also the early moments of my kids' lives. Keep your characters. I knew from the beginning that including these characters were gonna tie my videos together. But one unexpected benefit is that when you film the same types of things so many times, you have to start looking at it in new ways. So if you did it in a silly way yesterday, try and do it in a serious way today. Or if you did it as a time lapse yesterday, try it as slow motion today. Doing that with my Instagram stories has helped me tremendously to this day. Now when I have a sequence to shoot, I think about it as like, what are all the different ways I could approach this rather than just like, oh, what do I do? Don't forget to have fun. It's easy to get really stressed out, especially when you're in this daily grind, but you've gotta like it. That's the whole point. So if you plan to shoot the sunset and it starts raining, film that. Make it about getting soaked in the rain. In fact, this story right here, I was convinced my M5 was gonna die before I got to the studio, and I was strangely okay with it, not because I could afford another camera, not even close, but because I just thought, I'm really doing something here. I'm really doing it. Film in 60 frames per second. This is very bad filmmaking advice, but very good content creation advice. When you don't know what the end result is going to be, when you don't know what the story is necessarily, having those extra frames per second is going to come in handy. If you fall in a river or get hit by a pie, nice, slow motion. Keep 
going. It's easy to get discouraged when you've been doing something for what feels like a while and maybe you're not gaining followers. Heck, you're maybe even you're losing followers. But like a, a workout program or a, how I imagine they work, you really have to keep going for a while to see the results. And sometimes all it takes is just the right person seeing one of your videos. At the time I started even booking weddings because some random couple saw an Instagram story I made when I was filming at another wedding. And so just because it hasn't worked yet does not mean it's time to pack your bags. Keep going. Change it up. Maybe you found exactly the type of videos you made, but I still think, especially in the learning stages, it's really important to try something new. To this day, I still mine my old Instagram stories for ideas and inspiration for my current YouTube videos. This story right here. became the inspiration for this scene in a YouTube video four years later. It takes time. It wasn't until like six months to a year of doing this that I really started noticing patterns in my own videos. And that's a good thing because as you notice patterns in your videos, you either A, notice things you need to fix, like how often I say like, or B, you also start to discover what your style is. Keep it short. This is a mistake that I ended up making later on in my Instagram story career, but rather than making 15 second, 30 second stories, I was slowly making three minute, four minute stories. And here's the problem. Instagram stories is primarily a passively consumed app. That is to say, people open it on the toilet, in line at the bank, but almost never because they're like, time to consume some quality content. And so when people started seeing, you know, 20 frames across my stories, the drop off from frame one to frame two was so much more significant than when it was like 45 seconds, a minute. Because when someone isn't asking to see your video, the odds of them watching the whole thing without knowing what it is are incredibly slim. My best advice would be to keep it under a minute. This way, not only can you try and capture as many people watching through the whole thing as possible, but you can also repurpose that content for TikTok, YouTube Shorts, or even your Instagram main feed. One minute. Use an iPhone. Listen, I hate that this is the case, I hate that I'm even saying in this video, but uploading your stories from an iPhone is the best way to do it, mostly. I've had so many messages of people being like, what are the best export settings? Your videos are so crisp, mine are so mushy. With almost no exceptions, the answer is always upload it from an iPhone, not an Android. There are some newer Androids that have fixed this problem, but like, I don't know which one, so I can't tell you. All I know is that I learned Android upload quality is mostly just the worst. You do you. Don't make my videos, make your videos. You don't have to be eccentric and annoying in order to get people to be interested. If you're someone who speaks slowly and thoughtfully, there is a market of people that hate me and are going to love you. And don't be afraid to put in some of your actual hobbies and interests. It doesn't matter if it's Dungeons and Dragons or fencing or something like that. One thing that I do is I'll often try and put a close up of my phone that shows the song I'm listening to at the time, especially if it's on the slightly more obscure end. That way, most people won't think twice about it, but a handful of people are gonna see that and be like, oh, I love that band. And then they're instantly gonna have a slightly deeper connection because now we relate on that thing. So figure out what are the things about your personality, about your life that you could incorporate and do that. Making money. This is a fun one because a very unexpected benefit of doing this for so long is that brands wanted to get involved because brands always want to get involved when people are watching. I asked on my Twitter the other day, you know, for people that have been watching for a while, what are some stories that have really stood out to you? And to my surprise, a lot of people mentioned some of the ads that I've done, in particular one that I did for uh, this cold brew company called Stoke in Colombia when I was visiting their coffee farms. So when you have an audience that's started following you because of a specific style of video you do, they don't seem to mind the ads as long as you're still doing it in that specific style. You know, the thing they signed up for, they're still getting it. 
Now speaking of advertisements, this video right here is sponsored by Storyblocks. Storyblocks is not only my go-to for client videos when we didn't have the time or budget to get all the shots we needed, but I've also been using them in my YouTube videos and even my Instagram stories for a very long time. This story right here, I got so many DMs from people praising me for one shot in particular, which is uh, this one at the end. It just kind of makes me wonder, like, will time ever slow down? I hope it does. I didn't shoot it. I got it from Storyblocks. So whether you're an individual looking to spice up your social media content or even a production company working with lots of big clients, Storyblocks has an affordable subscription to suit your needs. They have over 1 million high quality, royalty free stock footage clips, but they have so much more than that. They also have sound effects and after effects, motion templates, they've got graphic elements, music, and they are constantly updating their library. So if you wanna learn more, go check out the unlimited all access subscription plan that they have so that you can go and make more videos. That's the whole point, that's what we're talking about. Make more videos and then you'll get better. Thank you Storyblocks, you guys are the greatest. Be critical, watch your own videos as if you're someone else watching your videos. No wait, as if you're watching someone else's videos. Watch them over and over again, even after you've posted them, and pay attention to, did I get confused at any point? Was it boring? Were there shots that I held too long? Shots that I cut too soon? Study them, because it's in doing so that you're gonna be able to find those mistakes and fix them in the future. I did this for about two years of daily stories until I made this story right here. Yo, the car is upside down. Let me quickly tell you how I got here. I'm gonna tell you how we got this truck completely covered in mud on this random front lawn. There is a limit. In my endless pursuit to see just how far I could take this format of Instagram stories, I got to the point where I was making these three, four minute vlogs. Videos that I loved, but that were ultimately unsustainable. Because if you're spending every single day always trying to one up not just the quality of your videos, but the content within them, you're inevitably going to hit a wall. I never had a Logan Paul in the forest moment, but I remember so clearly being so stressed all the time about what my next video was gonna be and how I was gonna one up myself. Not to mention that I was only sleeping maybe four or five hours a night because of this. I had to learn to be a regular human sometimes, you know, go on an adventure with my friends or pay for the person's food in the drive-thru behind me or make a fort with my kids and not film it, not tweet about it, not even tell another person there was a life outside of content and you'd be surprised at just how quickly you can forget that. Gosh, that got preachy. If you're looking for more resources on this type of topic, why not check out my YouTube channel? I've put out a full video on how to compose vertically without it being the absolute worst. I've put out a couple of videos on how to make in-camera transitions. I've also got a bunch of editing tutorials. And if you're looking for a deep dive into how I plan for an Instagram story, how I shoot an Instagram story, and then how I edit that Instagram story, I put out an entire lesson last year with Moment that over 2,300 people signed up for and the response has been overwhelmingly excellent, which, like I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but that feels really, really good. Uh, so there's a link down below for that as well. Please do subscribe, uh, and if you don't subscribe, I would appreciate just like leaving a like or a comment. I hate that it does, but it does help me out. Thank you, I love you. You are probably a good person. Not, not you, not you. Hey, please don't do that! You're too loud! There's roofers right now, and it has been going on for a month, and it's truly ruined my entire life.